He schooled at St. Joseph's College, Colombo, and Royal College, Colombo. He joined the Attorney General's Department in 1981 as a State Counsel and later became a Senior State Counsel. He was appointed as the 25th Attorney General in 2008. Today, he is the 44th Chief Justice of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka. The President of the Muslim Majlis, Patron of the Majlis, Dr. Rodrigo, Principal of the Law College, His Lordship, Justice Masuf, my learned friends, the Treasurer and the Reviewer, Mr. Amin and Mr. Hussein, the members of the Muslim Majlis, my colleagues, my President's Council, the, my colleague Sunyana Dasan, the additional solicitor, members of the Attorney General's Department, law students, parents, ladies, and gentlemen. It is indeed a pleasure to come back to this grand event of the Sri Lanka Law College Muslim Majlis where we witness the launch of the annual publication of your magazine, The Mizan. Ladies and gentlemen, The Mizan, as the Arabic word connotes, means balance. Balance which is a reminder of the sacred duty of we judges who are sworn to uphold, namely, the whole, the scales of justice evenly. It not only applies to us judges, but to each one of us that we lead our lives in balance. And that's what Mizan is all about. My dear students, Justitia, the goddess of justice, has frequently been depicted, as you probably see it somewhere here, carrying a scales, carrying scales on the one hand, and a sword, and wearing, uh, she's blindfolded, isn't it? You would see the icon of justice frequently adorning our courthouses and our courtrooms you will see that the fountain of justice, the font of justice, carrying a set of scales in her right hand and a double-edged sword in the left hand. Both the sword and the balance, what does it symbolize? It symbolizes the power of reason and the power of justice. They can be, as you would appreciate, be wielded either for or against a party. I was once, uh, just a few days ago, I was asked at the conference of chief justices held in Bhutan, which I attended a few days ago, as to the role of a judge in a democracy. In fact, whatever role that a judge performs in a modern democracy, we are sensitive, I say, to one powerful principle that would guide and goad us daily in our daily lives, perhaps hourly, namely the need to hold the scales evenly. Simply put in layman's terms, to play the game. I'm so pleased, ladies and gentlemen, and gratified that this powerful message of eternal verity, I say, is quite appropriately conceptualized in the name of the magazine we launched today, Misa. It is also consistent with the Quranic Surah 4, verse 135, which I have articulated in my message, as Justice Masuf was pleased to observe, which says, stand firmly for justice as witnesses to Allah 
even if it be against yourselves, your parents and your relatives, or whether it is against the rich or the poor. Now, it is not enough to pay lip service to such wonderful surahs. This intellectual effort that we see today of the team of office bearers in putting together a variety of literature for our reading pleasure has to be complimented, I say. And I would suggest to the principal, who is the vice patron of the Majlis, to digitize all publications of the Sri Lanka Law College, including the Misa, and make them available online. I think it's high time we did that. Today, all over the world, today, all over the world in academic uh, world in academia, world in the world of academics, portability of magazines and journals has been made easy by the authors having them published online. I had my next man seated next in my next seat actually reading a magazine on a little Kindle the other day. Why not have Mizan? That's what portability does in technology today. If you just access universities and law colleges websites all over the world, you can access an article at the click of a button as we know. I recently visited the Sri Lanka Law College website and other than for perhaps basic information about the college and the incorporated council of legal education, they're not even a reference to a publication of the Sri Lanka Law College. Leave alone MISA. So I think we should wake up and perhaps do something on those lines. Of course, I too, I, I take the responsibility for that for the reason that we have not focused on the urgent requirement of the need for publications to be online. So I can assure you that in the near future, not sooner than later, Mizan would figure online in the Law College website. So therefore, our legal literature must, we use the word, we have to pass passport control. We've got to migrate to other nations. It must transcend the borders of Sri Lanka. And the only way to do it is by having electronic versions of our journals online so that they will enjoy a global reach. Ladies and gentlemen, it will serve as an inspiration to all authors, young and old, uh, Mr. Principal, that some academics have taken the view that when you promote online journals, you promote originality of the work. You minimize plagiarism, whether an author knows that his work is going to be read in several parts of the world, and he will desist from copying and pasting in view of the copyright issues. Now that's another protection you get by going online. Now I will set, set, I'll cite to you a practical example to show you as to how online journals can come in very handy. Whilst in Bhutan, I had to sit to draft the uh, Thimpo Declaration for the South region. I had to do some research on, on the role of the judiciary. I'm quite famous for carrying my bags and my books, but this particular day I had left one little important book at home. And that was the role of a judge in democracy, which was written by Aharon Barak, Barak, the Chief Justice of Israel. Now I regretted not taking this fantastic book which I read uh, on the topic uh, by this great judge. Luckily I remembered the title to the book. And when I googled, it was uh, surrendishously discovered on several articles by the same judge on a majority of websites. And it popped up from the Harvard Law Review. Now that was what, what happened on that day. So it was a great reading and my view is that the rich literature that the Majlis editors have put together should be available to all of us in any part of the world. Now, strolling down memory lane, I stroll down memory lane and recall the Muslim Majlis of my time. I see my good friend, uh, Mr. Imam Faiz, whom I used to call the great Arab, because he had a camel, a little Lambretta scooter, which I used to sit in the pillion and ride all over this country, leaving my life to this good friend of mine. A joyful friendship which we had from our very small days because we lived 
one was just a few mi one mile from each other. I observed the perceptible difference, of course, today. In those classic days gone by, you could count the number of Muslim female law students. But today, when I look around, I see an army of them. I'm told the, the boys are outnumbered. Am I right? Yes. I feel so glad, however, that the legal literacy is today on the ascendancy amongst ladies. And the principal gives me the joyous tidings that they continue to display a winning streak in coming first in almost all disciplines that has been offered by law college. Now, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, have exalted amongst the faithful not only good virtues, but also the importance of education. Born and bred in Saudi Arabia, he had far greater vision, far greater vision. When he said to his favorite, uh, he, when he said that favorite hadith, quote, he said, seek knowledge even if you have to go as far as China. And he closed quotes. Seek knowledge even if you have, in other words, spread to the world. Go as far as you want if it is in the pursuit of knowledge. That's what the Holy Prophet said. It applies, ladies and gentlemen, equally to female students. As we see the translation of this article of faith in the Sri Lanka Law College and other educational institutions. It's translated and we see it manifest in these institutions. You would agree with me that Islam accords equality to women, not only in education, but also in property law, I observe equality. In property law, a Muslim female is a femsoul, an independent woman who can own property, hold it, and even dispose of it without any supervision or assistance from a, 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 a man, a, a, a male. Islam is a religion of peace. Islam, as we all know, means peace. That's something that we have to, every one single person in this nation should understand. Islam, as we all know, means peace. And it looks at cultural diversity and pluralism as a stimulus, I say, for intercultural dialogue and understanding than as an obstacle to peace and coexistence. Ladies and gentlemen, the Islamic approach to pluralism is reflected in the Holy Quran. The Surah al hujurat the verse 13 in which, which my learned, learned Justice Mazuf was pleased to observe. When Allah proclaimed, quote, O mankind, we created you from a single pair of a male and a female and made you into nations and tribes. Then ye may know each other, not that ye may despise each other. What a strong message of love. And that is what we sadly lack today. My dear students, take this message home with you. Sleep on it. Ponder about it. Live it. And I can assure you that you will have all the blessings of the Almighty Allah. Prophet Muhammad also highlighted the importance of intercultural harmony in the following saying. He said, a Muslim who mixeth with people and putteth up with their inconveniences is better than one who doth not mix with them and bear with patience. What a strong message. I can also leave you with the thought of that final sermon in, on Mount Arfa when he, when, he, when he founded, I say, fundamental rights. When he said, I will trample under my feet the aristocracy of you. Think about it. These are not things, this is not academic stuff. If it is academic stuff that we talk about daily and daily, preach about it, just lip service, all this means nothing, I say. We are fooling ourselves. I say this with all passion 
because I try very hard to try and not falter. As human beings, we human frailty, the supreme irony of human creation is that we will falter. But look at the strong message that we are left with. Look at the gift of the Prophet's words. Are we to throw it away, just you know, hang it up on the wall, preach in our churches, talk about it at these, at these occasions? But if we don't live it, what is the earthly use of having these books and this text of such great teachings? So I say, take it with you. Think about it. In every little activity you do, think of it before you do anything you do for the day. Relate it to your lives. When you work, when you go to court, when you study, before you sleep, when you wake up. And I can assure you that you will be at peace with yourself. Students, all these noble teachings of the Holy Book and the Prophet demonstrate one thing, that there is no extremism in Islam. Remember that. There is no room, there is no accommodation for extremism in Islam. Students, particularly, you have to bear in mind that you have a great role to play in promoting harmony and peace. I say this not only to you, I would say this to my colleagues on the bench, I will say this to my colleagues at the bar, I will say this to my colleagues who are in authority in leadership of this country, I will say this to the Buddhists, I will say this to the Christians. Because that is the message without which we cannot reach those heights of freedom, progress and peace that we are all so are yearning for. So here you are. So bear in mind that you have a great role to play in promoting harmony and peace. When the Almighty says in the Holy Quran, He says, stand out firmly for justice. Stand out firmly for justice. It is nothing but a commandment that every Muslim, every Buddhist, perhaps every Christian, and every man with a conscience on this earth must strive for justice. And particularly in your case, so that you will promote peaceful coexistence. In my view, Law College provides the conducive milieu, I say, and the proper forum to understand and accommodate each other and promote that elusive peace that seems to slip through our hands. We have so, and we so dearly yearn for. Being a tri trilingual polity, the Muslim students find themselves at a great advantage to play the role of peace builders. The friendships you form here are lifelong. I can tell you my friendship with Faiz, with Mr. Nawaz, one of your former students, former presidents. They're like brothers to me. And many of my Muslim brethren who have lived throughout my life who are standing with, me, standing with me hand to hand in everything I do. They are lifelong. I'm encouraged, Mr. President, that the Muslim Majlis, that, that the Muslim Majlis, in that unbroken tradition of disseminating interfaith understanding, interfaith understanding and knowledge, has invited students of other communities too to this happy occasion. And it is this cultural immersion, I say, that we need so dearly at a time when we march forward on our journey towards a united Sri Lanka. I congratulate the editors on a job well done. I compliment the office bearers for a successful year of great activities. And I wish the Matlish every success in all its future endeavors. May I finish? On the theme of unity, and I find no better quote than the Quranic verse 84, and I conclude by quoting it, quote, and remember we took your covenant to this effect, shed no blood amongst you. And this ye solemnly ratified, and to this ye can bear witness, close quote. I do not think there is no greater message that signifies coexistence so eloquently as I did quote to you just now. God bless you all.
and my best wishes to all of you. Goodbye and good night.